President Biden hitting the road while Washington, D.C. remains a beehive of activity, much of it in the emergency kind of nature. Now, Facebook, meanwhile, under the microscope in the Senate, Taiwan under pressure as China ramps up its provocations. A lot going on, folks. So let's bring in Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado. Congressman, uh, let's start with uh, President Biden. He went to Howell Township, Michigan, population about 7,600. He's there. He went there to sell that Build Back Better plan. And I wanted to note to the audience that you were born in Austin, New York, so you understand why the White House would choose a small town. Uh, but why should small towns be worried about this kind of gargantuan bill? Well, I represent a lot of small towns on the eastern plains of Colorado, and I can tell you he should be talking to that mom who has to go to the grocery store. She has two kids. She's buying milk. She's buying eggs, and she might be buying some meat, and prices are going up. And then she goes to the gas station, and prices are going up. And the idea that we should be pumping trillions of dollars into an economy that's already seeing inflation is scaring uh, people in small towns a lot more than the supposed benefits that, that uh, may, may be coming out of these bills. You know what? I, I did some research on, on, on the township, and it was interesting to me that from 2010 to 2015, their uh, household income went down like 13 percent. That was another era of big spending, right, big government spending. So people got to be very, very careful, to your point. I want to shift back to D.C. because I got to tell you, I watched a little bit of these hearings today, and there's a great sense of kumbaya in the Senate uh, where there was whistleblower Frances Haugen uh, giving a real detailed account of her experiences at Facebook and all their misdeeds. Now, she says the best action that Congress could take is to reform Section 230. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that. I think it's one of the actions that Congress needs to take. Uh, certainly, uh, when, when we talk about a, a term as broad as otherwise objectionable in terms of what uh, these, these platforms can censor, uh, we've got to tighten that, that term up. But it does no good to give an individual at Facebook the authority to decide what goes on and what doesn't go on based on congressional language if we don't have five or six different Facebooks, if we don't give people a choice in terms of what platform they, they choose to use. Uh, we see some really dangerous, dangerous outcomes from uh, Facebook and, and the fact that uh, uh, human traffickers and, and drug cartels and, and are using Facebook and, and the, the effect on uh, teenage girls and their self-image through Instagram, that's not going to change with Section 230. What we need is to make sure we have various competition uh, in the marketplace so that people have a choice. Is it too late for that, though? I mean, have we crossed the Rubicon on, on anything? I mean, listen, I know capitalism. We thought that no retailer could ever compete with Sears. And, you know, I, we, we've seen creative destruction, but a handful of names seem to have their hooks into this thing so deeply, so embedded. Uh, can, can we eventually see an alternative? Uh, we have to see an alternative. We can't give up on this effort. Um, I, I agree with you that uh, there are times during the Obama administration where they didn't scrutinize any mergers. And, and these four companies, uh, Amazon, uh, Apple, Facebook, and Google, became so big that, that they are really crushing competition. We've got to find ways of, of leveling the playing field and allowing competition uh, to compete in the marketplace. But, but we can't give up. We've got to make sure those things happen. Speaking of scrutiny, uh, let's talk about what's happening uh, over in Asia. Uh, a record 56 Chinese aircraft entered Taiwan in air airspace yesterday. Uh, and it was all kinds of aircraft, right? It, it felt like the kind of dry run for not just, uh, you know, not just for an attack, but for a sustained military operation. What can we do? Because these sort of provocative actions are getting more and more embarrassing and threatening. And I think the world needs to pay attention, particularly in the United States. I think the United States needs to pay attention. I absolutely agree with you. And I think it's important for us to make sure that we have a very highly publicized arms sales to Taiwan. I think it's important that we uh, engage in training exercises with Taiwan naval uh, as well as land. Uh, I think it's important that Taiwan has the ability. One of the things that China is doing right now is gathering intelligence on where the radar installations are in, in China and, and how are uh, in Taiwan and how Taiwan is tracking the airplanes that are coming across. And so we need to make sure that we are doing our very best to give Taiwan the flexibility uh, to, uh, to and, and really China just needs to will ultimately make a decision whether uh, it's a, a cost benefit analysis of whether it's in their interest to invade Taiwan or not. We need to make sure that the cost is so high right. that China decides otherwise. Right. And also that they don't feel emboldened uh, that will push back. Uh, Congressman Buck, thank you so much. Appreciate it.
Thank you. So Jenny Yellen rejecting the idea of a trillion dollar coin to save us from a potential catastrophe uh, with debt default. Uh, she actually calls it a gimmick, but a lot of folks, including some well-known economists on the left, say it's their exact right idea. I'll ask Larry Cutlow to break the tie.